Well, welcome back to RD Works Learning Lab for what I'm sure is the final session of the Max Min saga. Well, here we're looking at the before and after pictures. The before is on the bottom and the after is on the top. I want to start off by uh, thanking a couple of people who have um, kept my faith, if you like, because I didn't believe that this was possible with the machine. I thought that what I was seeing was um, some figment of my imagination. I first of all want to thank Matters, who assured me that he'd been using this Max Min technique for some time to cut letters in acrylic to get nice clean corners. I would also like to thank Walter because he persuaded me that there was definitely um, some ability here with Max and Min and that I should go looking for it in a certain area. As I mentioned in an earlier session, uh, my engineering upbringing taught me never to believe anything that anybody told me and only believe 50% of what you see with your own eyes because you could be seeing it for the wrong reason. Now, I've gone past that stage now, and I'm going to take you through the process which has convinced me that I'm not seeing anything imaginary, and that it is real, and that it is there for you to find on your machine, provided you look in the right area. And that's the key thing, looking in the right area. Now, Max Min in cut mode has always bugged me a little bit, trying to work out why on earth it would be there. Um, but I'm not the only person, and it's caused quite a lot of interest. Now, one particular guy in the States that I have regular communication with, a guy called Chip Williams, um, I think without doing him any disservice, is an electronics wizard. He's also got a 60 watt machine and he has instrumented his machine up to take a look into this subject because his interest was piqued as well. And because I didn't believe that there's any planned power ramping going on on this machine, here's one of the pictures that he sent me. Now it clearly shows that if you input 20% minimum power and 60% maximum power, the control system is doing something with those two numbers. He was cutting a square and you can clearly see the power ramping up and ramping down as it reaches the corners. Um, and at the same time you can see the way in which that ramp is actually dragging the laser wattage up and down. In other words, what we're looking at here with the pale blue line is the drive current through the laser tube. The next picture was rather an interesting picture. Now we can see from this picture that the tube that's in Chip's machine does not actually fire at 10%. Um, it probably needs to be something like 12 or 13% before it starts firing properly. What we can see here, as the blue line ramps down towards 10%, the laser power drops off, but it drops off very quickly. And before it even gets to 10%, the low point, it actually stops firing. Now, this immediately painted a picture in my mind of a square with the corners missing. Because if there's no power when you get to the corner, you're not going to produce a pierce point in the corner, you're actually going to produce a gap in the corner, but just because there's no power. All of a sudden, that set me thinking, what would happen if I turn my laser power right down to, say, 5%? Because I know that at 5%, my laser doesn't work. Am I going to produce a square with corners missing and is, and it was at this point that I decided I really had to do a matrix of tests to establish where this magical minimum carried out its work. I'll show you this first test but I've got a whole series of tests to do um, to encompass all sorts of settings. After I've boringly done all the tests we'll talk about the results. So basically what I'm doing is a set of lines at different speeds and then I'm cutting the results out so that we can get a nice clear picture through the edge of the acrylic. The interesting point here is these are the ends of the line where the deceleration goes down to zero and the line stops. Now as you can see with these the power is not dropping off until the very very last minute because what's happening the speed is dropping off but the ramp that you can see there 
is basically the power staying on as the speed gets less. And that's why we've got quite a deep cut just at the end. And as we look down those ramps, there's a subtle difference between them, but not much. So this is 100 millimetres a second with various powers. And the powers are set equal, equal. In other words, I've got 65% power max, 65% power minimum. Now I've purposely turned my extraction off because with these lines that I'm going to draw, the very last line that gets drawn is at 10%. Now I want you to listen to the laser as it draws a 10% line and you'll hear a distinct difference in the tone of the laser cut itself. This one. So that last cut sounded funny because the beam wasn't fully formed. It was mm, at some strange intermediate stage. OK, let's take a look at the results now. Um, what we see here is just the end part of my test lines. Um, because that's the really is the important part that we want to look at. Now all of these five tests here were done at 50 millimeters a second speed. Um, starting from the bottom line, they, this first picture was set at 60% power minimum and 60% power maximum. And all the way up we've gone from 60, 50, 40 through to 10%. Now as I did say to you, 10% wasn't really running properly and you can see that on all of the lines at 10% throughout these tests. So I'm almost going to ignore 10%, um, but not forget that you know it's at around about that value where something strange is happening. So these first set of results here on the left um, clearly show that as we're running to the end of the line, the power is not dropping off adequately. And so consequently, as it slows down, the cut is getting deeper. Now when we move on to the second set of results, um, when we take a look there at the 10% minimum and 20% maximum, um, there's a very significant difference between that and the one beside it. There is no tail. The power has definitely cut off before the end of the stroke. Maybe not completely proportionately, if anything, it's gone slightly the other way. So I would class all of those results as being adequate for a, let's call it a controlled deceleration. Now this third column is where I set the minimum power to 10%. They're still looking pretty good results. I've put a green tick beside all of them because I think they would all qualify for uh, a controlled deceleration. Once we get up to 15% minimum, if we take a look at the fourth column there, the pictures are going back out of control again. We're getting almost back to equal equal column number one. And certainly when we get up to 20% we've lost it. Okay now here we've got uh, a similar set of results but for a speed of 100 millimeters per second. And we've got the reference uh, set of results at the front there where you know the um, <coughs> We've got the reference set of figures in the first column where the max and min are set as the same value. And then we go on to the 5% where technically you would think at 5% because my laser is not firing uh, might not have too much effect. But surprisingly enough there is still good control right the way through to 60%. It does look as though the power is tailing off faster than the uh, than the speed, but it's still making it, it looks as though it's making it to the end of the cut. So whereas 5% minimum, 10% maximum tailed out before it got to the end of the cut, and you can clearly see that on the top, or top line there, um, the 520 and the 530 downwards all look to look as though they've made it to the end of the cut. And along with the 10% minimums beside it, 
I've given all of these a green tick. And these are tests at 300 millimetres per second. And you can see how exaggerated the tail is on that first column. But as soon as we get to the second column and we set the minimum at 5%, the picture changes quite a lot. First of all, there's too much power ramp off to make it to the end of the cut. So out of those cuts that I've got there, I've only given three of them from 540 onwards an acceptable tick because the others look as though they've run out of puff before they've got to the end. And then we get to 10% and they are all looking absolutely wonderful. They are almost looking perfect. And then when we get to the next column, which is 15%, they're again uh, at 1560, just about acceptable maybe, but I've left it as unticked because they're all looking pretty unsatisfactory. Much the same as the last column is the same as virtually the same as the first column. As the speed goes up, surprisingly enough, we've got a near perfect set of results there at 10% right the way across the power range. So it does look as though you can find some settings which are good but it is a bit like finding a needle in a haystack. We've had to look very long and hard to find the perfect set of results. Well here we are we're just going to do some square tests to prove completely beyond any doubt the concept. The first square that we're going to cut will be an incomplete square because the power will cease before the corner. So this is overcompensated. And there we are, as predicted, an incomplete square where the corners haven't even made it to the corner. So we've cut the power off before we've got to the corner. OK, so now we're going to go for the perfect square. And we will compare that to what I would normally have done, which would be a 60%, 60% max and min square. And here are our two squares. The top one has done what I consider the conventional way that I would always have done it. And now that I've found the Higgs boson, uh, there's a very narrow band where you can find perfection. OK, I owe this machine a bit of an apology. It's been damned hard work trying to find the needle in the haystack, but we have found it. It is there. It took a lot of convincing on the part of others to even make me believe that it was possible. But now that I've seen it with my own eyes, I've done it myself, I know that it's there, I believe it. Although your machine might be slightly different than mine, I suspect that if you hunt around in the very low percentages of minimum value, you may well be able to find exactly the same thing. Good luck to you.